Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, hola. Uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, I want to know how, how many Spanish are here? Spanish? Okay, very good. Okay. My name is Xiang Xunyong. Uh, may I move Xiang Xunyong? Okay. And I'm from Huawei, and I have uh, uh, eight years in experience uh, in storage and uh, data protection. And uh, I have contributed in OpenStack uh, more than one year. And today, and uh, I and uh, my partner Zhu Dong uh, uh, will introduce uh, this topic uh, about the container, cross-cloud uh, container persistent data. Uh, hello everyone. My name is Zhu Rong, and I'm come from China, 99 Cloud, and I'm a co of Morano and Salon. So, okay. Okay, this is the agenda. Uh, firstly, uh, we will introduce what is the container person data, and uh, second, uh, we will we will introduce when do we lead the container person data, and then, and we will. I introduced the scenario and the background about uh, the migration uh, container person data. And next, and we will introduce the what can be used to migration container person data. Okay, next uh, I, will, I will show how to migrate the container person data. Okay, the last, is the, the last one is the demo. Okay, that's it. Uh, first, uh, uh, my partner Zhu Zhong will introduce the. the okay. Um, as we know, uh, and the container is stateless and the data is therefore. And there are two types of data uh, the informal data and the processed data. Uh, for the informal data, they will be uh, lost after the container is removed. But compared with uh, environment that the processed data will be still available after the container is, uh, 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 is uh, removed. So uh, we will take uh, the uni, uni file system for the example of uh, informal data and the container volume for the processed data. Um, for Docker, uni, uni, file first, uni file system use Docker storage driver and the Docker volume use the Docker volume driver. So um, we introduce the container unified system. Um, look, at the, look at the first feature. Uh, when a container is uh, initiated, a uh, read write uh, a read write layer is added on the top of the read only layer. Uh, so any change made to the container when uh, it is uh, uh, when when it, when the container is running, the, all the um, that all the mm, data is uh, uh, referred in that and um, in the read only layer. In, in, uh, actually, the image layer, uh, the underlying layer in image layer, uh, the under underlying image layer are never affected. As soon as a change is initiated to an uh, underlying, um, a new read only layer is added. This is uh, referring as a copy, uh, copy and uh, write. Um, using a container layer provides several benefits. The most uh, is two: um, is speed and minimize the and minimize the storage space, uh, space need needed. When a new container is started, Docker does not clone the read only base image. It just creates a new one. And then referring to the base image, um, this can be do very fast. And about and uh, the, the next picture is about the unified system. The unified system is used to provide the duplicating a complete set of file each time you run as image as a container container or as a new container. And the unified system separate changes to a Container file system in its own layer. If you didn't have unified system, 
Um, exam for example, 200 microbytes image may um, run five times as five separate contents would, would mean use one gigabyte of the disk space. So what is container volume? A volume are uh, not controlled by story storage driver. And the volume are initial when a container is created. If if the container's base image contain contains data at the and service for the mounting po uh, mount point, the exist data is copied into the new volume upon volume initiated. Volume can be start uh, and refu reused among contain uh, containers. Changes to volume are made uh, directly. And uh, the change to volume will not introduce when the when you upon up, up, update an image. Volume imi volume persistent even if the container itself is delayed. So uh, what do we need a container process data? Uh, the uh, it uh, uh, the process data where. Uh, the effort nature of contents offers myriad of possibility when it comes to scaling and uh, disaster recover. But if uh, if also get a risk, the risk is that data inside the container. If the container is dead, anything of the anything of the rewrite read write layer is lost. But usually the application need a process the data st uh, storage. Uh, many, maybe it is a database or an uh, auditor logs. So, uh, when do we migrate con migrate container process data? Um, in such, uh, in the following such uh, scenarios, such as business change, uh, working load wo workload balance, and the and the hardware system upgrade, and maybe uh, and maybe the cutting of uh, cost. And, and some network and disk fault. This uh, uh, all the seniors maybe need to need uh, we need to migrate container process data. And so what can be used to uh, migrate container container process data? Uh, usually there are two way. Uh, uh, first is data volume container, and uh, and the another one is uh, fork. The data volume container is used to share some continuous update data to the container. The simplest, this is the simplest way. In, uh, the simplest way is use data volume container. Uh, the data volume contains a container is a common contain, container. Provide data for other container using the mount. Uh, about the fork, uh, about the forker. Docker special a uh, partition volume driver to perform the actual work. This volume can mount it when a container is created. Fokker is one kind of third part third party Docker volume driver for data volume. Uh, so next is about the data volume container uh, to um, about the backup and uh, restore. Um, and first, uh, we create a new con new data volume container. Um, let's let's use the Postgres for example. Uh, we create a new data volume co container. Um, the next one, the next we we can create a Docker um, and refer to the data volume data volume container. We're using the volume from volume from arguments. Then we can back up the data volume container using using the following commands. Uh, so that when it when backup is finished, we can we can pre we can, we prepare a new data volume container. Uh, so at last we can restore the older one older older data to the new to the new data volume container. Let's make the um, volume persistent. So this is the fork architecture. Uh, fork is uh, about the forker. Forker is a uh, uh, forker is an open source container data volume ma manager. By providing tools for 
data migration. Fork gives the ops teams the tools they need to run stateful service like a database. Uh, when you use the database, we can use Fork to uh, migrate the status data. Fork uh, manages stock container and volume together. When, and actually, it's when you are Fork to manage your stateful microservice, the, your volume will fall in your container when they, when they between different hosts in your cluster. So, Next, uh, where, where your partner, Xiang Xinyong, introduce the next part. Okay. Thanks, too. Okay. And okay, firstly, and we will talk about the, con con between, uh, the relationship between container and uh, OpenStack. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Maglan could uh, deploy the cluster uh, in OpenStack and uh, can use the, the uh, container orchestration engine like uh, Docker Swarm and uh, Mesos and uh, Kubernetes. And, uh, and uh, in the OpenStack, there is a, uh, still a project named Dream, and this project will, uh, will manage the uh, API of the uh, containers. Okay, let's talk about the uh, storage in OpenStack. There are lots of lot of projects uh, related with uh, with storage in OpenStack. For example, the Cinder provides block blockers, uh, block storage. Okay, um, Manila and provides a, provides a file system service, and uh, Swift um, provides the object storage service. Okay. Uh, you know, there are lots of uh, uh, Docker um, volume drivers like Flocker, like Convoy, uh, like Rex3. And uh, th there's still a, a, a project in OpenStack. Its name is uh, Fuxi. Uh, it's, a, it's a Docker volume driver. OK. <coughs> Let's back. Back to the, the topic um, and how to migrate container person data cross cloud. Uh, you learn a lot of technology and to to make a migration. Uh, firstly, we, we can make some uh, hard copy, and second, we can backup it and uh, restore. And today, I will, we will show we will show a demo in OpenStack how to. Uh, migration person data volume between cloud, like this, like this picture. Okay. Before that, I, I will introduce the uh, OpenStack project. So this project is uh, Kubber. Okay, Kubber is a uh, uh, OpenStack official project, and uh, its former name is Smog. Okay, Kubber, you know, it's a uh, uh, it's a, the Kala native name. You know, this, this, this animal is very cute and uh, it's living in Australia. And uh, uh, this animal have a pocket, so it means Kubernetes could protect uh, uh, everything in OpenStack. So Kubernetes also designed to provide a, a high level framework to integrate a lot of plugins, like from some vendor plugins Okay, and this is the Kubernetes uh, API. It defined what can be protect, so and how to protect. It means protect a plan, and uh, a protection provider. Protection provider includes two two parts. First is a protection plugin, uh, also we call it bank. And uh, another another thing uh, is a uh, uh, is protection plugin. And the protected data uh, are store, stored in the bank. We call it checkpoint. It's a little like a, like the run C. Do that, okay. And also, Kubber will uh, define when to protect. Uh, it's uh, it's about schedule operation and how to restore. 
OK? Uh, this is a carbon ar uh, architecture. First, uh, you can see a uh, lot of uh, uh, resource API. And uh, in the left part, it's uh, operation engine service. OK? It uh, provides trigger engine, uh, like times, uh, like event. It, it is triggered by, by user defined. If the user defined uh, once a week, twice a week, something like that. And the operating engine service will trigger the protection plan. OK? The very important service is protecting service. It uh, includes the workflow engine. And uh, it also includes protection plugin and the bank plugin. And Cover uh, defines this high level framework and uh, to uh, provide the vendors to write some code to provide uh, the pro protection action. And the bank uh, could be used to, to store the data and uh, include the metadata. Uh, so a bank could be a Swift or S3 or Safe and, and so on. And, and uh, also, there is resource plugin and well defined uh, um, which, pro which resource could be protected. Uh, Cover is able to protect any resource in OpenStack. So you can see the checkpoint, it's a little like the, the run C. OK, I will, I will introduce the solution, uh, how to migrate the con container person data across cloud using Cover. And you can see we have, we have two clouds, and uh, cloud one and uh, cloud two. And the containers is running on host. And uh, the container is uh, deployed by, by Maglon. And uh, this form is uh, provided by Cinder. And uh, the volume is mounted, mounted in, in this host, so the container can use the, uh, this volume. And they, for example, if we run the database uh, container, and uh, the, volume will st the volume will store the database the data, like we mentioned in the previous slide. OK. And first, day we can. We can use cover to, to migrate the volume to the cover bank. We call it checkpoint. And on the other side, we can use cover and to restore from checkpoint. So when the volume is restored, and the, the container could mount this, this volume and continue to work. So it's a, this, this is a migration process. It's about the, uh, checkpoint and restore. Okay. Okay. This is a this is a, a environment exists in cloud one. I introduced the, we 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 use the Kubernetes and the Docker and the volume is is mounted uh, in VM. Or, or bar meter. And uh, we, we developed, we developed uh, uh, a cover volume plugin to mig migrate, uh, migrate the data into the, into the bank. And uh, here we use the bank is, uh, is Swift. And uh, uh, in the Open Cloud, OpenStack Cloud 2, and we will use Maglan and Hate to deploy your environment. It also includes uh, Kubernetes and Docker. And, and then we will restore the personal data from bank by cover in the Open, OpenStack Cloud 2. So um, this process is a finish your. Finish the migration of the container 
person's data. And uh, we could deploy the data database container in Cloud2 and see the database is still, uh, still working. Okay, at the last step, uh, we will check whether your database container work. Uh, we prefer a demo uh, to, to show that. Okay, it's a, li it's a little small. Uh, first, this is the uh, cloud one. Uh, it's uh, deployed by uh, Kubernetes. And uh, we used the one master and one load. And here we will, we will log in the Kubernetes master and the, and the minion. Firstly, we will create a sender volume and, re, and record the volume ID. And this is a Kubernetes uh, deploy files. We will use the sender volume ID. Okay, we can use, we use the Kubernetes control to create a container cluster. Actually, it's a MySQL cluster. And you can see the sender volume is in used. The container will use the sender volume. And this is the, this is the container ID. We log in the My, MySQL and, uh, and uh, create a database. And then create a data table. We call it Cross, cross side, cross side one. Okay, this is a table structure in my cycle. And then we will, we will create a protection plan in Harbor and uh, choose the, the volume resource and create a protection plan. And uh, we, we can protect the law. It will generate the checkpoint in cover. You can see that. It's, it's still protecting. When the checkpoint is available, uh, we, can, we can do that, do the restore in the other side, side two. So you can see that Swift, Swift uh, have some data about cover. Okay, we can we can restore in the cell two, restore a checkpoint. The checkpoint ID is the same because the way they are share the, the same Swift. We also call it bank. When the restore is finished, you can see the volume is, uh, uh, is restored in another side. This side has have, have already deployed the uh, container cl uh, cluster. Also, We can modify the, the Kubernetes uh, deploy file and insert the sender volume ID. This volume is a migration from the cloud side, cloud, cloud, cloud one. Okay. We can use this command to cre create the MySQL cluster and mount the sender volume into this, into this cluster. Okay, you can also see this volume is in use.
Okay, the cluster is running. It will take a lot of times to deploy the Kubernetes cluster. And then we will log in the cluster minion to check the database. Okay, we have already logged in the MySQL. So you can see we have a database cross site. Also, we have a table cross site one in this in this cl container cluster. Okay. Okay, so what's the next? Uh, you, can, you can see a lot of ways to migration between cloud. So we, we, we need a new project like this one, data migration as a service. Okay, you can see a lot of resource in OpenStack and like container, like VM, like volume, like share, and like uh, image. And th this resource uh, can be migrated in inner uh, one cloud and uh, or, or migration between clouds. So we proposed uh, this migration workflow. Firstly, find the resource entity. For example, we can uh, make some compose like VM, uh, like, like container, like volume, and like some share. And then we will specify the migration target. And then we can create a migration group. And then we can launch this, this, this migration. And this migration will create a migration task until the, the migration is finished. So this is our idea about the uh, migration in OpenStack. Okay, we can discuss discuss more in detail uh, in the design session. If if you have some interesting, you can take a photo at, at this design session. Okay, we, we can also discuss, the, discuss it uh, in the IRC channel. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, any other question? Hello? So uh, I would like to ask, how does it work in uh, Keystone? I mean, the identities between the both clouds. Yeah, the, the Keystone is a is a problem. So uh, we uh, we you know uh, we use the the bank in cover. The bank could be a, a Swift, or S3, or Safe. And uh, in this demo, uh, we we use the because the the cover has a. Uh, bank plugin and uh, it, it's very fl flexible and we can configure configure the address and the user name and the password to collect the bank and so we uh, in this demo we share the, the same keystone okay that's it yeah Uh, I mean, I don't know if you would go through, for example, uh, federated identity, or if you had uh, like an uh, identity provider which should have, which should uh, give you the same uh, identity in both uh, clouds, then. Uh, 
Yeah, we we could could also uh, use the S uh, Amazon S3 as a bank bank. Okay. Any other any other question? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.